Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome you all to a very new series of lectures on numerical solution of partial differential equation. This is going to be a lecture number one in which we are discussing classification of PDs, specifically second order PDs. And then we will discuss how we formulate finite difference formulations. Okay, so let's start with classification of PDs. If my unknown function u is depending on two variables x and y then a partial differential equation a general partial differential equation of second order will look like this where u x x are two derivatives of u with respect to x then u x y are first derivative with respect to x and then the second derivative with respect to y in an open form you can see this second order general PDE will look like this. Okay, if we want to classify a second order PDE, then we are only concerned with these three constants or variables. In some cases, they will be constant, but there is no restriction. They can depend on X and Y. So this above equation will be called parabolic if B square minus 4ac is equal to 0. We will see these things with an example in next slide and this above PDE will be called elliptic if b square minus 4ac is less than 0 and hyperbolic if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0. Let's have an example. Example number 1. Classify the following PDE. Uh, so we have to classify it. We should know what is over a b and c in this case so two derivative with respect to x since u is depending on x and y you can see clearly the derivatives are with respect to x or y so second derivative with respect to x should have a with it there is nothing here so my a is 1 in this case uh, a derivative with respect to x and then y second derivative u x y should have b with it i can't see anything it's plus 1 here so b is plus 1 and c is minus 2 in, case, in this case since uh, second derivative with respect to y should have c with it. Now I have to find b square minus 4ac. So b square minus 4ac will be 9 which is clearly greater than 0. So this above PDE is hyperbolic. Okay. Example number 2 classify this PDE. Uh, so we have to classify it. Now second derivative with respect to have uh, x with uh, have a with it so a is 1 in this case now i can't see u x y and i can't see second derivative with respect to y so uh, my b and c are 0 this partial u by partial y uh, will be the part of that d which is not our concern to classify the pd so b square minus 4 ac in this case is 0 so this above PDE is parabolic in nature. Now the third example, now u is depending on two variables t and x. So my according to my second order uh, general PDE with respect to t two derivatives will be a. So a is 1 in this case, b is 2 in this case and c is also 2 in this case. So my b square minus 4ac is negative 4 which is clearly less than 0 so this PDE is elliptic in nature. Let's have another, another example which is example 4. In this case you can see that I have variables multiplied with derivatives. So in this PDE my a is x, b is not here since u is depending on x and y and I can't see u x y and c is y in this case you can see from here now b square minus 4 a c will be something variable it's not constant so we cannot say it is less than 0 greater than 0 or equal to 0 so we have to formulate three cases in this case if my x and y both are greater than 0 or both are less than 0 in this case my x y will give me a positive answer but the overall answer will be negative due to this negative sign so my pde will be elliptic in that case case number two if one of them is less than zero and one of them is greater than zero in that case 
my this answer will be negative x y product will be negative but due to this negative the overall answer will be positive so my pde will be hyperbolic in that case and if my x or y one of them is zero my overall answer will be zero so my pde in that case will be parabolic so this pde can have all three characteristics elliptic hyperbolic parabolic depending on the values of x and y so that's enough about classification of PDEs. We are not getting into more details uh, since we are concerned with numerical solution of PDEs. So you should have the idea that uh, what is meant by elliptic, hyperbolic or parabolic PDE. Now we will move forward to finite difference formulations, which will tell us how we will approximate these derivatives by using finite difference methods. So before understanding the finite difference approximation of derivatives, you should have the idea of finite different discretization of PDEs. This is the first step to apply any numerical scheme on PDEs. It means dividing the domain into small slices of equal or unequal sizes. So in this case, we are only concerned with equal sizes like if my u is an unknown function and it is depending on x and y since i since i want to find the unknown value u at x y which is a point in a two dimensional plane so i am uh, considering a horizontal axis x and vertical as y this complete rectangle is my overall domain in which I want to find the value of unknown function u. Since I have divided the domain into small cells, the horizontal step of these cells will be delta x while the vertical step will be delta y. Let's represent uh, x with i for simplicity and y with j. If my this unknown value is u i j generally, then this value will be u i plus 1 j. Since I'm not changing in y, I'm only taking a step forward in x. And this entry will be u i minus 1 j since I am taking a backward step in x and y is not changing so it will remain the same like this is j so this will be j and this will be j now let's move upward and downward so if i am moving in y if i am taking a forward step my i will be same and j will take up one step and if i am moving backward in y then j will be j minus one and i will be same so my concern here is to find all these values all these nodes to find the behavior inside this domain according to whatever the PDE was given. So this is what we will do. So now you have the idea of finite difference discretization of PDEs. So let's move forward and discuss how we will discretize the derivative of the PDE. Okay, so if my u is depending on x and y, then the forward approximation of first derivative is, okay, so first derivative with respect to x will be approximated as like this according to forward differentiation formula. Since I am changing in x, so my, I will take step in x only and y will be same. So forward step in x minus at that point again divided by how much the jump or step was so if i want to write this in the form of i and j it will be u i plus 1 j same minus u i at, at the point at which you want to approximate the derivative u i j and then divided by the step in x this is order delta x formula we are not discussing this thing in detail okay if i want to approximate 
a partial derivative of u with respect to y so i will uh, take a forward step in y then at that point y again divided by how much the step i took in y if i want to write this is indices notation so this will be ui j plus 1 minus ui j divided by delta y this will be ordered delta y formula so these two were forward approximation of first derivative of u with respect to both with respect to x and then y now let's have backward approximation according to backward approximation uh, the partial u by partial x will be u x y minus one step backward in x since this is with respect to x divided by the step size in indices notation it will be u i j minus u i minus one j divided by delta x and for partial u by partial y u x y and backward step in y x will be same divided by delta y since i took the step in y in indices notated notation it will be u i j minus u i j minus one divided by delta y okay if my u is depending on t and x now my independent variables are t and x then partial u by partial t will be u t plus delta t x minus u t x since i this derivative is with respect to t divided by a time uh, a step in time delta t okay in indices notation we usually uh, represent time with n and we usually write it in superscript instead of subscript so uh, this will be u i same and i'm taking a step in time so n plus 1 minus n divided by delta t and the same formula for uh, partial u by partial x will look like uh, something like this since i am taking a step in space not in time so this will be i plus 1 and i because of forward approximation n will be same so i'm freezing the time coordinate and moving in space divided by space step delta x and similarly uh, if my u is a function of t and x again the backward approximations will be like these i think i don't have to explain this okay the central approximation uh, of first derivative we are only uh, approximating the first derivative right now the central approximation will b if my u uh, if my derivative is with respect to x one step ahead in x and one step backward in x divided by two times delta x since i took the two steps so in indices notation ui plus 1 j ui minus 1 j divided by 2 delta x if my derivative is with, is with respect to y then one step in j forward one step in j backward divided by 2 delta y and if my u is a function of t and x in that case my central formulas will look like this for time it will be n plus 1 and n minus 1 one step ahead in time one step backward in time divided by 2 times delta t and for space one steps in i uh, ahead and one step backward in i divided by 2 times delta x and of course n will be same in this case okay let's learn the uh, finite difference approximation of second derivative for second derivatives we usually uh, use central approximation of derivative so if my u is a function of x and y in that case the central approximation of second derivative with respect to x will be one step ahead in i i at i again minus this will have a weight minus 2 and one step backward in i divided by step size square delta x square if i am approximating second derivative with respect to y one step ahead in j then at j again then one step backward in j and weight will be 1 minus 2 1 and divided by step size square okay now if i want to find a mixed derivative like uxy partial square u by partial xy the formula of this will be 
finite difference formula of this will be like this uh, i plus 1 j plus 1 i plus 1 j minus 1 i minus 1 j plus 1 i minus 1 j minus 1 divided by 4 times delta x delta y and weights will be 1 negative 1 negative 1 plus 1 and this formula is of order delta x square delta y square now i am not writing these formulas on my own these formulas are derived from taylor series and again we are not getting into taylor series because our concern is to use these formulas to find the numerical solution of partial differential equation so that's enough about finite difference formulation of the derivatives that will appear in the pds that we are going to solve numerically in future and these are some practice questions for you if you want to learn the discretization of pds according to forward scheme backward scheme or central scheme let's end this video here from the next video we will start learning to solve the partial differential equations numerically